Welcome to the Introduction to Paper Piecing, Part 1. Now you've probably heard a lot of pros and cons about paper piecing, but let's put these to rest. One of the most common is, but it's so confusing because I have to sew backwards. At first, you might think so, but when I show you why it's done the way it is, you will be amazed and you won't feel like it's backwards at all. But it's such a waste of fabric. Oh, but it's not. You can use your tiniest scraps that you normally would have thrown away and turn them into a thing of beauty. Yeah, but you have to tear all that paper out when you're done. Not necessarily. But even if you do, it's not hard to do, and I actually find it relaxing. Well, you know, not all blocks can be paper pieced. That's true, but the ones that can be are sometimes too hard to do any other way. Well, I've actually run out of cons, but here are some more pros to consider. Number one, you don't have to sew an exact one quarter inch seam for perfect points. Yay! It's okay if your fabric is slightly off grain. No more stretchy biased edges to worry about. Oftentimes a paper piece block created by a beginner looks better than one done by a professional using another method. And let me tell you about precision. I whipped this block up real quick just to give you a demonstration. Each segment of this block is three quarters of an inch. Finished size in the block is one and a half inches. And this block contains 28 different pieces. Try doing that without paper piecing. Okay, I'm in, but what tools do I need? Well, first you need to download the 40 Bright and Bold Paper Pieced Blocks by Carol Doak. You can go to this website address to download the files. It's a direct download electronically and it will work in all countries. When you order your designs, you'll be given a serial number. When you initially start to open these blocks, it will ask for that serial number and then open for you. You do not have to have Quote Pro systems installed in your computer. This is a standalone program. In addition, you will need an iron. I really suggest using a small one if you have it. You'll need a small pressing surface that you can keep by your machine. You will need a small cutting mat and rotary cutter, also by the machine. I use a combo by Omnigrid that has both the mat and the pressing service in one. You will also need a ruler, and I highly recommend the add a quarter ruler. It makes paper piecing so much easier. Now I have this listed as a template, and that's generally what it's referred to by other paper piecers, but it's actually just a piece of lightweight cardstock. You can use the inserts from magazines, whatever it takes, just something to give you a straight edge when you fold your paper piecing. No, I haven't lost it, folks. What in the world is this? Well, it's an empty pizza box, courtesy of my favorite pizza place. It's some spring-loaded clothespins and a Sharpie. And I'll explain the Sharpie and clothespins later, but you can put your fabric after it's cut in the pizza box and keep it organized and clean. You'll need paper, of course. Now you can use printer paper. I don't recommend it. I prefer to use a very lightweight stabilizer, and I'll show you why in a moment. For those of you who don't want to have to remove the paper, there's also a paper solvey that will disappear in water so that you don't have to take any of the paper away. This is definitely a more expensive route to take though. If you look at this photo, you'll see why I prefer the lightweight tearaway stabilizer. 
you can see the piece of fabric underneath the tearaway stabilizer very plainly. That's located on the left hand side. The regular printer paper on the right, you can see just a shadow of it, but not very well. And the whole goal is to be able to see what you're doing on the other side of this paper. So if you're using printer paper, you'll need a window close by or some other light source so that you can see the fabric through it. Using a paper like this that you can't see through is what gives people the feeling that they're sewing backwards. You really want to be able to see through the paper. And of course, last but not least, you'll need your sewing machine, of course, and I recommend an open toe foot. Look at this pretty block, six pieces. All of them have bias edges. Didn't have to worry about the bias stretching. Didn't have to worry about precision cutting. Didn't have to worry about quarter inch seams, but yet everything came together perfectly. Join me for part two of Introduction to Paper Piecing.